Toaster Sighting, I'm Sam. Apples with Faces, I'm Jackie. This Christmas, remember, you have a dog. I'm Justin, and this is Feeders 2, Sleigh Bells on Stinker Madness. Hello, welcome to another Holly Jolly episode of Sticker Madness. This week on the podcast, we got a stinker from uh, 1998-ish, uh, starring Nobody You've Ever Heard Of, directed by Nobody You've Ever Heard Of, having very little to do with anything you've ever heard of. Uh, it's Feeders 2 on, currently streaming on Tubi TV. Sam, we go to you. In the studio. 1990 was the year. 1990 it came out. Was the it happened in 1990. The new tech video toaster arrived on the scene. <laughs> I'm going to talk like this because this is a very special edition of the boring bullshit. Okay. One, because it is very special to me. And two, I will be talking about hash rates on computers. This is really boring shit. R- so r- if I am really wow. exciting... It won't seem so bad. <laughs> yes. Party. Yes. Uh, huge, huge <laughs> oh boobs. God. Huge, huge boobs and butts. There's, yeah. there's none of that in this movie. No, I'm just trying to make it exciting because he's going to yeah. talk about fucking ASCII, I'm guessing. No, it's so. The Commodore Mega 2000 was a price point Amiga of $2,399. Wow. Which is extremely low for a computer in 1990. Yeah. It wasn't until the mid-90s that our local company, Micron and uh, Compaq and Gateway, started making computers for under $2,000, which was like, what? Yeah. Now you can build one that's faster than a 1,000 of those for about 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah, uh, 500? I just seriously bought- A Raspberry uh, Pi is faster than 500 of them. No, I bought, seriously, a refurbed computer on Amazon that's got like a 3.4 uh, gigahertz- uh, S- one terabyte SSD, twelve v- gigs of RAM for a hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, the refurbs right now because I re- the only thing that was wrong with those was they had platter drives. So mm-hmm. you put a s- solid state in there, and it's like a fucking new machine. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, all it does is print documents because people still need documents printed. Apparently, I in twenty twenty two. God, no, the fucking print. Yeah, I'm still fighting the- printers. Like, yeah. like, I want to take mine out and bash it with a baseball bat in a field. Like, how have we not moved past printers? It's insane. You want to dr- drive to an office and throw a copier through the window with a brick tied to it that says, why do you hate the forest, motherfuckers? <laughs> okay. The clock rate. This is the most boring part here. The <laughs> clock rate of a Commodore Amiga 2000 was 7.158 megahertz. Okay, that's pretty slow. At the time, I don't even know if that's fast at the time. I, I, but context. Yeah. here's what it is. It is exactly double mm-hmm. the 3.579 megahertz carrier rate of NTSC color video. Okay. This All is right. not on purpose. Now we're getting this something. This is completely coincidental. We're getting A man named Tim movie Jennison stuff. in Topeka, Kansas was like, Hey, that's exactly double the carrier rate of color NTSC video. That not very expensive, fairly slow computer would probably do video pretty fast. Mm, okay. And it did. All right. This, the video toaster, the original video toaster, was just a switcher. It still needed a uh, video control unit for the DAX. But if you already had a AB editing system, you could buy this thing for under $5,000. If you were a news station, this was a game changer. Like if you were a news station in a small market, like Boise, Idaho, which is why I know what a fucking video toaster is. Okay. Hold on. Because every news station had one of these. I got to interrupt you there for a second. We're losing Jackie. Jackie, big titties, big titties and big butts. Mm, Could you imagine like a, a... Fast uh, cars going wiener. around a track, car 14 crashes, inch shoppers wiener exploding, slapping against huge boobs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. She's back now. She's she's not asleep anymore. Here we go. So if you already had the editing decks and the editor, you could basically just plug this in and it would run as a live controller and you could set up your whole program, how it was going to edit. And it would just do it in front of you. And if you ever saw the first time that you saw one of these things run at the time, you were like, I am in the future. Oh, my God. What do I do? 
I didn't. I never did that. <laughs> you never got to see a video toaster. You I, got I to had, see that AB editor that we had in high school that I ran. And you're like, that seems like it's really hard. And I'm like, yeah, it's really fucking hard. Yeah, I'm still not sure. You had to do it on I the have fly. That expression. I like. I think you're. You're. You would be one to say that. The rest of us would be like, that's a thing that I don't care about. You would be like, why is that thing making so much noise and what is it doing? Yeah, right. And then leave. <laughs> yeah. So the shortly thereafter, they did the toaster flyer, which was expensive. Because oh, I all love of a sudden, that screensaver. The little flying toaster from that era of computers. You remember those, Jackie? Brave little, that was a brave little toaster. It was totally different. Um, yeah, it's a different thing. Okay, all right. Huh, weird. The toaster flyer incorporated hard drive systems. And it was really one of the first nonlinear editors. It wasn't the first. There's other stuff. I think Avid was around before this. But um, Boise State University had one that was set up for mass storage for uh, having multiple students do multiple projects. And so it had to have required a lot of storage. So it was the size of a closet and it cost like $56,000 just the storage setup. Okay. But again, if you were a person that didn't care about the decks or if you were a small news station, the video toaster was a total game changer. Uh Uh, They still do. It's called a the video toaster is still a software, but it's no longer standalone because everything has changed. I'll get to why everything has changed later. You have to. But new tech is still around. The thing is, is that you could do the Tonight Show use these. This is so ideal for a three camera setup. Same day turnarounds. Same day turnarounds. Right. Incredible stuff. Special effects on same day turnarounds. It looks like shit. And that's why you can go, anyone that's ever used one sees it and goes, toaster. That looks like crap. <laughs> okay. But it was only like $5,000. Okay. So I'm, I don't know anything that you're talking about. Sure. I'm just going to tell you what I'm thinking. In my head, when Sam says video toaster, I'm imagining a toaster, but instead of the handle where you push it down, there's a camera. Mm-hmm. And okay. then on the side of the toaster is where you see the picture. And then when it gets too hot, it burns <laughs> you and you have to put it down because it, it's a heating element in there. And it's it's like, nope, you've been shooting for too long. And then the Pop-Tarts come out and then you have to stop for 45 minutes. I don't know if it was named toaster because it's like toast is so fast. Or if it was named toaster because by the time you get the little breakout board that has the connectors for video on the back of the computer. Mm-hmm. That it looks like a toaster. It mm. could be a little bit of both. Okay. Um, right. It's just a clever name. Just a clever name. New Tech still makes Lightwave. And that was the other thing is that this thing came with Lightwave. Okay. It came with it. Wow. And Lightwave has come a long way because the first Lightwave gives you the special effects that you see in this movie. Sure. Okay. All right. And it would take a very long time to render them. Like, click. I'll check on you next week. See you later, little guy. But okay. the Amiga was a stable platform. Let me ask you this, this since you're talking about sure. money and this movie now, you finally tied it sort of together. Uh, this movie was probably edited, let's just say, in 1997. At, in 1997, would this still have been an expensive piece of equipment for these two brothers who directed this movie to get their hands on? Or yes, is this absolutely. a piece of junk that they're just, they could pick up at the thrift store? No, as a hobbyist, this is a this is an extremely luxurious item. Okay, all right. Hmm. As a hobbyist, this is, this is like if you're a hobbyist now and you've got, you know, $50,000 worth of equipment okay. to make your home movies. That's, that's the level of home movies that they're making. This is, TV stations have this stuff. In, in, this, um, in this period of time. All right. At this period of time. Where they live, their TV station probably uses this. Our TV stations all used this because it was a small market and they couldn't afford the big stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea of same day output then leads us to I know what cameras they used. This is a really interesting thing where somebody that was involved with this a technology at this time can spot it because it was stuff that didn't really have a lot of competition. There was like... You could get one of these and you could do it or you could spend a lot more money or the thing that was less than it was shitty. And the thing that was about the same price was shitty. Like SVHS, boy, was that really not that great. It was better than VHS because the VHS camcorder was like, 
It just made diarrhea for your eyes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. VHS camcorders were awful. VHSD somehow managed to be worst. And just regular 8mm uh, magnetic was god awful. Hi8 was better than VHS, but SVHS was markedly better. Titties! Titties! She's going! Titties! <laughs> Car crashes! Car cr Trains smashing into each other! <laughs> a 14-inch oh penis car ramming in to a, a triple D... Buzz, no, you're, you're, but you're, you're making I that don't even, even boring. Know. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's move forward. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I can tell you that this film was shot with a combination of Panasonic AG456U, which is my least favorite camera of all time, because it was <laughs> the on. only camera that I could use for a four-year period. There is a line <laughs> when you guy. drew. There's like the visual, if it gets so grainy, it can't be blurry. Because it's too grainy to be blurry. But if it gets so blurry, it can't be grainy. Because it's so blurry, it can't be grainy. That's the Panasonic like every... AG-456U says, No, sir, you can be this blurry and grainy at the same time. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it anymore, this Jackie. Is, just kill me. <laughs> just kill this me. Is, this is like every Bigfoot picture or Loch Ness Monster picture that you see is what you're describing to me at this They're point. They're better. I mean, like... They're better. You yeah, spend all, all this time. Th those are all 35 millimeter, right? Yeah, mostly. Or, uh, you know, 10 millimeter field range finders. It, they're they're not as blurry and grainy. Yeah. Do we the, call uh, Bigfoot big because he's only got one big foot and then his other one is like a club foot? Yeah, why isn't he big feet? That's a good point. Maybe because he saying. leaves big foot. No, they'd still be big feet tracks. No, it, whoever came up with Bigfoot's a damn moron. Hey, that's why it's a squatch. Yeah, I don't it's call got it. like but one big pros, foot and a peg leg. <laughs> us pros call him squatch. So, so you're saying, Sam, that the uh, film used in the Patterson Gimli footage would be, uh, you know, because if we're going to go into Bigfoot talk with cameras, now you're talking my language. I don't. Know I don't care about, about this uh, this fucking AV class shit. But uh, you get out, out in the woods and you start hunting some squatch with the camera. Now you're talking to me. So what you're saying, Sam, is this Panasonic D camera would have been great for hunting Squatch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an AG456U or UP, depending on when you bought it. The okay. real Squatchers prefer the <laughs> BG296, really, though, <laughs> with the optional uh, telephoto. I think that the, this camera is one that they probably used to shoot feeders, the original, okay. but then had gotten into enough money that they could then upgrade themselves to the JVC GYX2. <laughs> Which is a seven thousand dollar camera, and every news station in a small market had one. Because mm -hmm. X Y Z was taken. <laughs> X two sounds bitching. It's yeah, like the X two. X two. Yeah. Pee Wee's like the X two was like a motorbike or something, and yeah. Pee Wee's big event. X two's like X two is the two letter equivalent of badass. Hand me the X two. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's time for the X two. Yeah, that's like. When, we, when I was in college, you'd be shooting, you'd be editing, and somebody would walk in, and they're like, oh, did you get to use the X2? And I'm like, yeah, I got to use the X2. Because <laughs> well, they could see it, and they go, oh, I can actually see what's going on <laughs> in frame. Hey, there's a movie. <laughs> Uh, JVC actually developed SVHS in 1987, and the X2 was basically black magic for everything. Uh, e equivalent cameras were costing $20,000. It was $7,000. It was a three-chip camera. It was the the s most affordable camera that you could have one chip per color, which brings us back to same-day turnout. All of the movies, home movies, and everything under this era all looks like shit because it was done with the lowest and TV equipment, and we're used to seeing a movie that was shot in 35 millimeter, mm -hmm. or at the very least, 16 millimeter. Mm -hmm. A 16 millimeter film, if you worked at a processing plant, and you made a, a 45 minute two reeler, or a, a full length movie, and you worked there, and you did it at night, and you just paid for your own chemicals, you're still out 20 fucking thousand dollars yeah. on processing for the chemicals, and the, and the reels themselves. If you shot end bits that you were beg, borrowing, and stealing, you were out $10,000 to fake a movie on film. So, so ten thousand dollars out of pocket. Let's so circle basically, this, so let's basically, circle back to the movie. You, you, what you're saying is, without this flying toaster thing, we wouldn't have, and and this JVC camera, we wouldn't have movies. We wouldn't have like this. this. I will Super get to exactly why we wouldn't have movies. This. 
you you would have to go to uh, Roger Corman and have him produce your movie rather yeah. than you producing your own movie like we've got here. Yes. No I, I, Tommy I will get, Wiseau, no Neil no Breen. Tommy. It gets, well, I'm no going to get there. James Nguyen. It comes full them. circle. Just let the boring bullshit hey. gestate. It's boiling the pot. I'm stirring it. Let's uh, throw and some titties And we're like in. frogs that are sitting in the pot ready to die. <laughs> yes. Or get toasted. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Sam. It is, it is interesting. Go ahead. So TV systems dominated this market or this niche arena of hobbyists because that's what we have to this is this is a hobby this is mm -hmm. hobbyists they're sure. doing this yeah and if you recall circa 2004 ish mm -hmm. we started seeing people shooting movies on their still cameras that were digital and you were saying oh this guy did a movie and i was really bent about the whole thing if you recall anybody that wasn't me was an asshole and i was like these people don't know what they're fucking doing and you'd see their stuff mm -hmm. and they was bad writing bad editing bad everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the picture looked good enough they're like this is instantly better than what i'm doing because it looks better because it was meant to be film it was meant to be a film picture that's what it was mimicking Okay. And the Canon 5D and the ASPC sensors and the smaller chips that weren't full frame were meant to mimic the still image in the way it that it was a photograph and that it would look as good as a photograph. So when one guy or two guys or however many people were like, hey, we should make it to where this can shoot video too. Mm -hmm. They accidentally dumped the whole fucking cinematic world on its goddamn head. Okay. I only was bent about it for about a year, because if you recall, what I did after that was I bought a camera with an ASPC sensor, and I was like, holy shit, this thing shoots in CinemaScope. It looks like film, and it cost me $300, and it fits with all my Canon lenses that I already have. Yeah, yeah. You had a you had and I was like three chip cameras. You had three hundred dollars back then. Yeah, right. It was a scrape. <laughs> I my mom was like, Why did you buy that? And then I showed her a couple of pictures and she was like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. I see why you're having a hard time paying rent, but you bought one of those anyway. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. So you didn't eat for a month. Right. And you were like, yeah. best diet of my life, and I got my camera. Drank hams for a year. <laughs> it is the beer refreshing um, which brings us directly to the polonia brothers from pennsylvania john and mark john and mark polonia john died suddenly in 2008 of what cause i don't know it seems uh, very tragic they're heart and twin brothers heart aneurysm. oh my god yeah. that's awful yeah and they're twin brothers mm -hmm. um mark still doing it is well over 40 films that he's mm -hmm. done now yeah and where we're coming full circle, why it was so hard out of pocket with film. Even the hobbyist filmmaker had to use TV equipment because before video, news stations used a camera called the CP-16 at large, mostly. Others, big stations probably had better stuff. Small stations probably tried fucking eight millimeter or something. But the CP-16 was kind of like all of the Vietnam footage is CP-16. So those things spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. Uh before feeders, which was, I'm almost sure, shot on the AG 456U, they were using a CP-16. And you see, like, they get a movie done, and then they got another movie done, and then they had four movies that weren't released for a long time. Because it's that fucking expensive to do film. Even yeah. 16 millimeter, when you're going to the news station and you're just getting the last minute that they haven't exposed on these reels and shooting minute to minute with, with what would be trash, you still had to be out of pocket $10,000 to get the fucking thing made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When remember, you could be out $10,000 fucking dollars and you've got a toaster and a fucking camera that you get to use over and over and over again. I remember in reading uh, Bruce Campbell talking about the making of Evil Dead and the the production behind it. Their their cost of the film was the most expensive, and they had everything set up for people were excited about it, but they still couldn't get it into theaters because they couldn't even produce it. Because they didn't have enough money. They spent all the money on the actual film or the, the actual production of, you know, the sets and, and paying actors and goop and all that. So they had to spend six months traveling around the world 
trying to find somebody to chip in just to pay for the film to be developed. When Darren Aronofsky made um, Pi, his breakthrough movie, and uh, Christopher Nolan made Following, his breakthrough movie that's both ex- exhibited at Sundance right around the same years of mm-hmm. each other, they're renowned for costing, they both cost an odd number that was exactly $30,000. Because <laughs> that's what the fucking film right. costs to make it. Mm-hmm. That's all they spent on it. Yep. Was just film. It's crazy. And you can make a movie with your phone that looks better right now. Yep, sure can. <laughs> Taking pictures of my balls right now. They're going up on the internet. Hey, suck it, 8 millimeter. <laughs> Still, Actually, they look about as good as 8 millimeter because it's just my balls. They're, they're going to look terrible no matter what I do, right? Like, uh, yeah. Get, get some some current Christopher Nolan tech get his cinematographer in to shoot my balls it still looks real bad yeah I mean I can't help it <laughs> I think you can get Vegas video for like a hundred bucks now right yeah sure so with the phone you've already gotten a hundred dollars you can make movies yeah so if you want to make movies you can fucking do it just just go do it yeah starring um, my nuts. and that's where this is is that their their productions are extremely troubled because of the CP sixteen until nineteen ninety five when they do um oh crap nineteen ninety five it was called uh I forgot it was the one before feeders either way this feeders and the one before it boom they've got they can make movies over and over again without out of pocket costs mm-hmm. and without this sort of weird technology that's all so accidental right that. None of this would exist. None of it. It's kind of surprising that uh, the the AIP, the Action International Pictures, uh, David Pryor's group filming in Alabama was able to make so many movies without this technology, you know? He was doing, working as a Hollywood dance choreographer. Yeah, right. So he was spending all of his money on his movies. Yeah. He was out of pocket. On that shit so hard. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, here come the Pagliacci brothers. What are these guys' names? Peg- Polonia. Pe- Polonia brothers to do very similar uh, style filmmaking, but on a much cheaper budget. They, so one of them was in the movie. Which one was in the movie? Mark. Mark is in the movie. You, you notice if you watch the credits, there's a bunch of phony credits. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They make up names because they did all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Mark wrote it, John directed it, didn't get in front of the camera, because this is pretty ambitious for a small production like this, how much they did. Mm-hmm. That's got to be his sister, right? That's plays his wife. Oh, boy. Yeah. They, his sister and her kids. They look a lot alike. Yeah, the kiss do. was awkward. Yeah, it sure was. Um, so he was the guy, the guy, the brown haired guy dad, with the little the cop dad. mustache. Yeah, the dad. Okay. There's only like know five people in the movie, Jaggy. There's only five people in the movie. The the kids, I don't know that where they came from, but... Later, her name is Mary Humes, and later there's an actual real credit for a dolly grip. I don't remember a dolly shot, but mm-hmm. I figure the only other guy that was doing everything, like the audio guy, the uh, gaffer, like everything that's happening behind the camera is got to be John Polonia, and this guy named Francisco Humes is obviously her husband. Yeah, right. Okay. So this is like all in the family mm-hmm. all the way. Right. Cool. And it was, you know, production cost zero dollars. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe they Upfront they were out investment. of pocket on yeah. the monsters, maybe, or they had friends do the monsters. They gave uh, accurate credits to the fabrication of the little guys, I guess, that weren't. Well, I actually, they no, start- because they're probably just the same models from Feeders One. No, I think they had the two little ones were new. Okay, all right, maybe I haven't seen Feeders One. I, I don't well, know if I'm going you, I to. think you kind of did here <laughs> a little bit i don't know because i kind of look to see if that crappy digital sepia tone mm-hmm. the toaster sepia was if the movie was shot that way or if they just did that for flashback purposes because yeah. i think i saw a clip from feeders that wasn't sepia so yeah i'm guessing that was only for here yeah all right what else you got anything that oh, that Okay. Just that 25 minutes. Yeah, just that's that all. 25 minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, that's, it's. I mean, it is extremely boring stuff, but it is all very relevant. And without it. Uh, we don't have a show. Yeah, we don't have a, we don't really I don't have, have a, a hobby. show. I mean, like you think about it and it's kind of a big unappreciated deal. 
like the the no, the the normal movie person just sits down and watches a movie and oh well, you know I liked it or I didn't like it but the idea of not having independent filmmaking because it costs too much to develop film thank god we got over that hurdle i mean like yeah. we've got problems and in the world that we can fix like the recycling and the trash bergs and stuff and like but man if we had this on top of all that the other problems like that that would have been a problem this is how we solved that problem yeah we don't you don't even need vegas if the vegas video for 100 bucks or whatever is only if you want to have Keep your stuff away from your raw footage away from Google because you can just fucking use the YouTube editor mm -hmm. in your phone to make right. whatever you want. Yeah. No, man. I mean, so, what would we do while sitting on the toilet if it wasn't for this technology? Look at I Twitter? Got, no, I'm looking at YouTube. I'm, yeah, I got to you, ask. Go ahead, go Jackie. Ahead, Sam. No, because Sam's comment is more relevant to Sam, to your guys' comment. Without go YouTube, ahead. like the learning channel isn't the learning channel. It's TLC. It's mm -hmm. the baby bunny bullshit channel, right? right? Yeah. You can't learn anything without fucking YouTube. Anytime you want to learn anything, you go to YouTube and you look at real people that are sharing what they've learned and saving you time. Sure, they get viewers, they get a little money out of the deal, but it's good. Like there's a lot of bad stuff on YouTube and there's a lot of bad stuff on the internet, mm -hmm. but the core hope of learning and making the world a better place is still there. How do I change the brake booster vacuum pump on my 2006 Audi A6? Got to go to YouTube. Got to go to YouTube. Without without that technology, that brake booster's going to the mechanic. And there's guys like, hold on, I'm gonna, I'll show you how the work, my clip works here. I'll, say, I'll just going to show you because I'm using my phone. Yeah. And I only got two hands. <laughs> right. But he gets you through it. He gets, he you, gets through you through it. it. He gets you through You're it. You're like, thanks, buddy. Yep. Without you. Without you. Yeah. Without I mean, the, the my son and I, we, we picked up a new hobby thanks to YouTube called magnet fishing. Yeah, it's true. And it's kind of super fun and addictive to watch on YouTube, and it's fun to do on your own, but we haven't caught anything yet. We've caught one little fishing hook. Yeah, you chuck a big magnet in the Which river Which is good, and because you saved up. one fish's life. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure, top tip, I want to, uh, we did, I was watching one YouTube. If you do decide to do this, get the sharp pointy things out. If you pull out big pieces of metal, throw it right goddamn back in. If you pull out something that's got living critters on it, Throw it goddamn back into that fucking yeah. water. The critters love metal, but all the fishing line and the fishing hooks, get all that shit out of there. Yeah, there's a lot of trash that can be fished yeah. out. And I mean, it's a cool hobby because it uh, it really is good for the environment. And As long as you're not pulling out where they live. Like, oh, right. I mean, like if you pull something out metal. with, you know, a bunch of mussels or something on it, throw it back. But... I mean, the, some of the videos that I've watched, like, they pulled up, like, stop signs and, sh and like, bicycles and all kinds of weird shit that yeah, throw people all, just throw yeah, in there. Yeah, no, you can throw the bike back in. If it's just metal, just throw it right back in. They That's that's their homes. Like, that's why we still put cars, why it's okay to dump cars and ships, sinking ships into the ocean. We don't pull those out. Nobody's messing with them because that's where the fish live. Yeah, Shout out to... Uh, What's that movie? The Devil. Uh, oh God damn it! This is where the fish live. Anyways, <laughs> the movie The Devil. This is where the fish live. That's good. Yeah, I like I, that. I'm from a Stinker Madness podcast. Uh, I forgot what, what the name of the movie they what, did before Peters was. So. Yeah. What what are, what podcast is this that we're on today? Is this, oh my God! Uh, is this stuff you should know? I can't. I don't know where I am. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's uh let's crank this thing out. Uh, uh wait, feeders before go, okay. before we right. we crank it out. I got one question yeah. for Sam cuz he's our, uh -huh. you know, our research guy. Sure. Um the boss, is he related to the family too in some way? No, he had a different last name. I he was somebody. That was well, a, <laughs> Not really some I think the pallet guy is probably really the pallet guy. He's yeah. probably really the town insurance <laughs> guy, which is right. somebody in yeah. their town, right? Yeah, right, and, okay. and they, this is a town. It's called Hillsboro, Pennsylvania. That's where they they made all of their fucking movies. Was this Hillsboro, Pennsylvania, just like the uh, Prior Brothers down in Alabama? Yeah, they have a yearly horror fest dedicated to them. I mean, when we're like, oh, made by some guys that you don't know about. Actually, a lot of the listeners that like bad movies probably know about these guys. These yeah. guys are heroes in the cult film arena. Like for hobbyist filmmakers, these guys are like. 
the fucking Cohen brothers. Yes. Uh, directly after learning that and about halfway through this movie, I was like, oh, I just found a well of fucking garbage to uh, put on like 40 movies that uh, we could put on Stinger Madness here. Well, and there were three of these movies, right? Three of the feeder movies. Yeah. Feeders Is that what I saw? just came out this year. 2022 feeders three. So we'll have to see if we can get our hands on that. And then feeders one was 80 or uh, 90, 96. When Mark gets to 50, that's like, it's, it's, he's done something that should have been impossible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. What it should have been impossible. Neil Breen's got like four or five, four. Wizow's got one and a TV show kind of, kind of, I mean like these guys uh, pat yourselves on the back gentlemen. For sure. Okay, feeders two, sleigh bells. All right, so the effects are terrible. <laughs> hey, it's, they used a toaster. <laughs> These guys, I mean, yeah, what a, what a great filmmakers. We respect them so much. Um, the effects are pretty bad. <laughs> it, it's, they were used to, to comedic effect on The Tonight Show. Carson loved true, the toaster. True. Uh, <laughs> so basically it starts out with, these alien ships, there's flying saucers. They fly into Earth and they're invading. They're all over the place, but they're like, it's not like the uh, Independence Day guys, right? It's just these little UFOs flying around. So then we cut to a guy who was in Feeders 1, maybe. I'm not even sure if it's the same actor, but the character was in Feeders 1. And he is getting interrogated in front of a tape machine, but we never see who does the interrogating or where he's at. He seems to just be like, yeah. So here's the deal, guy I met that says I've got a building you can sit in and talk to me and a tape recorder. Uh, I, I killed my best friend because I thought he was an alien. He's also got... Hair, his hair has been blow dried and styled. Very, very uh, lots of hairspray. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a, he's supposed to be the pretty man, the pretty man of this movie, and it's oh. just kind of like he's rambling and being weird. And then we're getting all these like weird little flashback things of him uh -huh. stabbing his friend, and then it just cuts to somebody's house. Yeah, well, he's like, we've got to fight them. The, we, the only way humanity, they will kill all of us and take over our planet if we don't band together, Bill Pullman, and then fucking get out there and fly that jet up its ass, Dennis Quaid, Randy Quaid. And on the other side of the fourth wall, I raise my hand and say, I can fix this with a shotgun in about 15 minutes. Oh, we haven't even gotten to that, Sam. Jesus, anyway, you don't need a shotgun. But we should mention, <laughs> we should mention this is John McBride, who was one okay. of the co-directors of the original Feeders. Oh, okay. He w leaves and does some movies for, either sells some movies for trauma, to trauma or does some movies for trauma. It's oh, never really clear what, right. what Lloyd does to scratch up his films. <laughs> right. Okay. So meanwhile, Christmas... This is a Christmas episode, right? Let's get that. Christmas is going on. We get introduced to the, uh, what I'm going to call the Munsons, because uh, that's what this uh, family, they just scream, hey, we're the Munsons. They are the most boring, drab, common, mundane American family that you could, pa I mean, their house is like, was probably built in the 50s. Uh, the guy drives a Pontiac Bonneville. I mean, mm -hmm. they are the borings. Yeah, he they got in. all their light oak round corner mm -hmm. furniture during the Reagan era, even. Right. And, uh, like, they eat pork chops that are very thin and rubbery. Right, yes. Uh, they also have, he's got his pants tucked in, a belt, uh -huh. right. khakis. The kids are sitting in dining room chairs handing them candy canes to put on the tree. They're not allowed to decorate the tree. Right. They're just allowed to sit there and watch them decorate the tree because fuck you kids, you might break something. Now they're not they're not tall enough. I wanna I wanna just go ahead and declare that while the Munsons may be extremely common, boring, generic Americans, I goddamn love them. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great family. Great family. They, they got two precocious little scamps as children that just love everything. They're sweethearts. The husband and wife clearly love each other, even though they're extremely boring and unattractive. Uh, 
They're just good people. Like if they were my neighbors, I would help them and ask for their help whenever I needed it because I, th I think that I could rely on them. These are good goddamn Americans. Yeah, if you need a cup of sugar, they got you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, are, they are definitely more realistic than what you see in any Hollywood movie. Oh, yeah. This oh, totally. is like they hit modern America, middle class. Middle? Lower uh, middle. Yeah, I don't think these guys are. They're not doing great, Jackie. I mean, at one point he comes in with bills, bills, bills. It's like, like uh, gives a look at his wife when the kids are like, "We're gonna get lots of toys," and he's like, "What if Dad loses his job?" Ugh. He, he does data entry for an insurance. Guy. Yeah, I mean, they're living. They're paycheck to paycheck, honey. They're not. Uh, they're not middle middle class. They're they're on the edge. But they're grandma working. probably paid for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, no, because grandma's dead. But, but because they're good guys, grandma lived with them up until the end, and they took care. That's why she doesn't have a job anymore. Because grandma, you know, grandma, she had to take care of grandma until she. Either died. way, they're hardworking people, and and yep. they're very nice. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the aliens. Back to them. Uh, I like to. Uh, I would like to point out that. Their ships are powered by what appears to be a, a photo inversion strobe. Okay. There is an effect in the video toaster called Nuke, okay. which is a slow negative color thing. Uh -huh. And there's one called Crazy Nuke that's faster. <laughs> when I was being trained, <clears throat> when I was being trained on the video toaster, my instructor, Dr. Rudd, <laughs> said if anyone turns in a project with nuke they're losing a letter grade if anyone turns in a project with crazy nuke you're getting an f oh my god so i'm assuming it's nuke because like you see it's, the th flash they use and it crazy inverts. nuke at the end but it's just nuke on the front end right but it, it like the uh, it's named after like that shot in like say the day after tomorrow or yeah whatever the one the What's the one with the nuclear bomb that was on TV? The day nobody forgets or the whatever. The day after. The day after. And, you know, oh, no. And then you run that effect to uh, simulate everybody getting nuked rather than, you know. Uh, that's that's great. That is that is a good tidbit, Sam. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I used one of these things for three years. Yeah. I will also say that the aliens look like, uh, I don't know if you two ever did this because you grew up in the sticks. But you used to take an apple and you peel it. Okay. So it would just be like the flesh of the apple right the apple yeah and then you would stick uh apple seeds in its in its in it so our eyes and then you would put where, something where else the, for a mouth where the apple and seeds come from other apples you, so you, you have, have to take an apple cut it in half get the seeds out then mash it into a an a, you couldn't use like beads or something you had to yeah, destroy two use, apples you could use beads or whatever but you ate the okay. other apple but you just <laughs> used the seeds right Okay. And so then you would put it on, like you'd shove a stick into it mm -hmm. of some kind, and then you would let it dry out, and then it would make this weird little round head with all these little bumps, and it was called an apple person. Then with these, with the body that you built out of wire, you would give it a little costume, okay, and take it home, and everybody had at least two, and that that's what these aliens remind me of. But instead of like the little wire thing, right, for a mm -hmm. body. One was made super fat, like it was a basketball with really tiny stick legs and arms like a little kid would make with an apple head. And then the rest of them were kind of just an apple head with thin bodies that had weird necks and really tiny little bird-like limbs. Yeah, yeah. And they're not tall either. They're, they're like maybe a foot and a half tall. These guys aren't big. No, they know somebody that works at a cast company. And they made it as big as they could make the casts. You don't they... think these were just paper mache? No, because one hits the ground, it looks really rubbery. Okay, all right. And the, all of the head bending in that, they had to cut into the back of it, so it had to be hollow, so they could do minor puppeteering. Head bending? It's you get uh, you, you, it. They're twisting I, it back and forth. The head, the maybe, head doesn't. I don't move. know. I mean, the puppeteering is crude, but it it's there. Okay, they right. move. They're right. bendable. So back at the Munsons, they're all asleep. Uh, then the aliens come to their house, hover over their roof, and hit the project nuke effect outside of their house button. 
and yeah. Nuke is projected outside of their house, thus waking Dad up, who peeks out the windows and is like, the fuck? Uh, that's pretty weird. And then they, I guess they teleport, they beam down using video toaster. What's that effect called, Sam, where they beam down? So that's, those are going to be either, it's a fade transition with the sparkle dust, I think is the one. Sparkle is dust. called, and ring dust is one of them. Uh, and then they did star, they did color border at one point. They had uh, quadruple star. But mm. basically, you're just layering because the way that toaster worked is it didn't have a timeline. You had croutons, so you'd put a clip in, croutons. and you put a clip. So your actual project looked like a storyboard. This was really functional when it first happened because nobody knew about multi-track things. It hadn't happened yet, right? So the crouton-based editing system, you you were looking at a thing that looked like a storyboard, okay. and the transitions would be in between the croutons of the video clips that you'd mm. have in in and out points on, and you'd actually have to set the in and out point to make a crouton so that you didn't, you couldn't change that when you plugged it in. If you had to change uh, out point, you'd have to redo it and then take that crouton out and put a new crouton in there. And then you usually redo your transition, but you could layer transitions on top of each other where the rendering time would go up, but it would do rendering and store on the hard drive. So it didn't have to re-render that effect. Now, where did you put the sunflower seeds in? The sunflower seeds. In the eyes for the, oh, the, for the apple. Yeah. Okay. You got one. croutons. Uh, <laughs> the ranch dressing <laughs> will ruin the processor. Gets too hot. Okay. I like I like all the names in Video Toaster. It's like they hired Liberace for yeah. a week to just name names other than Nuke. I don't know who came up with that, but Star and and Sparkles. There's, and, there's a confetti. Uh, they have lightning oh, yeah, transitions. They got. Uh, and you can layer them on top in. of a. You can layer them on top of a cut or a fade, and this is how you get that. With Lightwave, they were probably only doing the spaceships, and because Lightwave was so arduous back back then to even make an object, um, so you'd use the presets that came with Toaster. And there was tons of them, and then the community would generate their own, and you could buy it or they just share with each other. It was great. Titties, car crashes. <laughs> there was a car crash one. There was there's a couple of car crash ones that like you ram through the TV. All right. So they all beam down and then the ship flies off because I guess it's got other things it's up to. Like it's not like, hey, guys. I mean, and how many of these guys are on a ship? Because you get interior shots and it seems like there's like three maybe running this goddamn thing. And then five of them beam down and it's like, well, who's flying the ship? They. How many does... Okay, well, we'll save it for when Santa shows up, I guess. Okay. Wait, oh, spoiler! <laughs> All right. So, Dad's going to work. <clears throat> it's Christmas Eve. He's like, my, you know, uh, it's 5.40 in the morning. Better get ready to go to work at 8. Uh, the aliens, they've gotten into the basement through a window, I guess. They can just beam in wherever they want to beam in. Well, yeah, but they, when you see them beam in, they're all outside. These aliens are idiots. They are they are so stupid. So stupid. How I mean, question number one, let's just get it. How did they master interstellar space travel and then be absolute idiots? I don't know how you can travel across space and then you just beam down to make strange noises, futz around, and kind of eat people poorly. <laughs> And it get it gets stupider. They get dumber than that, actually, even Sam. Oh uh, yeah. So the light flickers while Dad's shaving, or no, he's blow drying his hair, and he's like, "Oh, I gotta go check the fuse box." So he goes down in the basement. And you're like, "Oh, here we go." Uh, he notices that this window is open, and then he just like kind of shoves it back into place because it's a removable basement window. It's not. It's not open. It's a removable window. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so he locks him in and then the alien is like, oh, no, I'm stuck in here because I didn't bring a communications device and I forgot about beaming to where I want to go. Right. And then one's outside and it like runs up and it's like, shit, I can't get in. Well, how did the other ones get in unless they came in through that window? And it was that window open the whole time. He left they the like, window open. The, the removable. Oh, I always forget to put the removable window back in. <laughs> She's like, God damn, heating bill's so high. And she's like, 
You keep leaving the window in the basement open. Why, why did we get a removable window? Well, that fucking Anderson guy, Renewal by Anderson, he said that they were what everybody wants. Removable Whoever windows. built the house wanted to, like, ferry in things into the cellar, I guess. Yeah, well, it's portable. You, you, everything's, it's 1990s. Uh, every, we're making everything portable nowadays. You never know when you want to take a window with you. You might be going out camping someplace, and you need a window. So we get some portable windows. This one goes with you. <laughs> Or it just sort of fell out, and that's as much fixing as it ever got. <laughs> yeah, just got to cram it back in there. Okay. All right, so uh, Dad leaves for work, and uh, the kids, the kids, <laughs> these kids, goddamn, they are just so precious. Immediately, they start <laughs> wrestling around, and just and looking at the camera, and a looking lot. at the camera a lot. The boy eventually sticks his ass in front of the camera and drops a bomb. <laughs> Blows ass right in the camera. These are all post production, <laughs> and you can tell that was another thing. Like there was so many things that would have been impossible without the toaster and the level of sound design with a nonlinear editing. They would have had to. It would have been so hard to do this on the fly. Mom looks at him and she's like, "Maybe Santa will bring me some insanity for Christmas." Kids, <laughs> kids wrestling, farting, jeez. All right, so. Now, uh, this one alien that's stuck outside, I'm still really confused about this part. This one alien that's stuck outside appears to follow dad to work, but then the next establishing shot we have of the location is just somebody's house, but the Bonneville is parked outside of this goddamn house. So it's clear. There's like, like six cars. Yeah, there's like a bunch of goddamn cars in front of this house. One of them's the goddamn Pontiac Bonneville. They like we all, Jackie and I thought, oh, Dad didn't go to work. He went to go shack up with uh, Susie. Maybe at the insurance guy, it's like commercial residential. It's an, used to be a house, or it is his house, and he just sells insurance out of his house. No, because the only person inside this house is an old lady that's on the phone. So it's just a mispaired. I can tell you what happened. Okay. I can tell you what happened because I've made this mistake before. <laughs> um, they did the establishing shot, but he took his own car to ferry the equipment. Mm -hmm. and then he got back and he's like, <laughs> oh, fuck, shit. my car's in the oh, shot. Shit. <laughs> oh, well, nobody's going to notice except stinker madness. Well, it's really stupid because there's like eight cars out in front of this house. And then the aliens bust in and they go through the garage. And the only thing in the garage are snowmobiles. <laughs> Oh, we park our cars outside naturally. And there's no snow in this whole goddamn movie. There's snow. No. Yes, there is. Well, there's fake snow, Jackie, but that, it's not. Yeah. They live in Pennsylvania. Do you think you got to. Who's who has just decked out snowmobiles in your garage? I think it's funny. I think it's weird. Snowmobiles. So there's this lady on this phone on the phone. I'm assuming. Forget everything I said about grandma. I'm assuming that this is the Munson's mother. Yeah, or the mother-in-law yeah. of some kind. Yeah. It's yeah. The, it, it's her mother because her she mother. calls her back later and yeah. like, I guess she's shopping. Yeah. So, okay. But she's we definitely a busybody because she's like, I've been calling people all morning and nobody's mm -hmm. answering. I'm like, because yeah. caller ID came out and they know it's you and they don't want to spread the gossip with you. Yeah. Let's stick a pin in that uh, because that's going to come into play later here, believe it or not. Um, so she's on the phone. Um, she hangs up. The aliens start glowing in the basement because I guess that's an effect in video toaster as well, where you can make an object kind of. That would have had to have been done in light wave. Okay. Uh, and the cat's like, oh, I hear something glowing in the basement. I better go check it out. So it goes down there. Uh, it gets it. The cat dies. Which was awesome because all you weirdly. see it is a thing of like coiled up people hair that hits uh -huh. a box that's been bloodied. Right. And, it's and then like, the cat meows cat after. Like it like splat against the box and the cat goes, <laughs> like, wait, no, you're dead. You just died. Maybe the alien was blowing through its vocal cords like a little cat <laughs> horn. That's his that's his lure for the lady who then wanders around fluffy 
is just great. <laughs> like, fluffy, fluffacars. I wrote a couple of these down. <laughs> Fluffer nut. <laughs> Fluffkins. Fluffkins. Like four minutes of fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Where's my little fluffer? <laughs> Well, a fluffer is actually a guy in a porno set that right, keeps right. you hard. Oh, she doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> she finds the, and I'm putting this in very loose quotes, cat. Because what it appears to be is a photocopy of a picture of a cat that's been cut up to pretend, to seem like it tore its face off. It looked like two napkins painted to be cat. cat remains. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looked like to me. But there's like this perfect cat face in the middle there's of a it. Cat face in the middle of it but the rest of it's sort of square and then there's like <laughs> paper mache blood kind right. of underneath it oh my god it's it looks very so two-dimensional these cat remains looks so bad and it's awesome and, and then the alien gets her like oh no fluffy yeah and then she dies somehow like yeah and they i don't think the alien made it all the way through her butt because it was pretty big yeah, oh oh no <laughs> Oh, his father-in-law was a real rump wrangler. <laughs> I just say it was bad. It was just, you know, got some hind end on that one. <laughs> grandma. Hey, grandma, you're looking thick today. With two C's. <laughs> oh, well, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Somebody would. Her only fans would be. Oh, God. <laughs> Sam and nobody else, basically. No, no, think. that's okay. the, the weirder shit. The weirdest shit is the ones that, like, I don't, I've never gone there, but I read the stories on the post of the ones that are, the post goes through, like, the, the super popular ones, and you look at it, and you're like, man, people love weird shit. This is weird. <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, yeah, so she's dead. The kids are up. They're looking for Santa. They're looking out the window. Where's he at? And... She sees, they see in one of the aliens, it's the alien that's stuck outside running around doing whatever it, the fuck its objective is. And they're like, look, it's a little elf. Yay. Santa's on his way. So they already know about these aliens. But they, they're duped because they're stupid. Uh, stupid little kids. Well, the little the boy's be like, I don't care about elves. Where the hell is Santa? Yeah. Yeah. Why would Santa send an elf early? It's not even Christmas Day. It's Christmas Eve, you stupid little shit. Okay. Uh, then we cut to a church where there's a pastor who's uh, catching up on some scripture. Uh, turning the pages backwards as he reads. Yeah. He, I have given him a name. Okay. He is Reverend Murder Addict Diamond Sweater. Mm, murder Attic Diamond Sweater. Murder Attic is his first name. Diamond okay. Sweater is his last name. Okay. Uh, Gnome or Elf, uh, Dwarfish. He has a Dwarfish name. <laughs> because he's got a Murder Attic. He does have his a Murder Attic. His attic is super murdery. Yeah. Uh, th and that's my next note. He goes to the garage, which is upstairs. That's his Murder Attic. He's got a Murder Attic. He's got a workbench. And some pretty nasty tools upstairs. He's got a whole nother one downstairs that seems to be for woodworking. Right. And storage. If you like, keep tools upstairs, it's only used on people. Yeah. <laughs> it's the this only time is... you use tools upstairs. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. Aliens did us a favor on this one. <laughs> this guy's a real Jim Jones. Okay, so he then goes into the basement where he's got another workbench, as Sam said, and then he steps in goo, which I can only infer is alien shit from eating the cat. Right? That's what yeah, I was thinking. Or yeah. barf. Because they don't, they're not goopy. They don't. No. So it's got to be crap. But it is very sparkly and pretty. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. if you could get creative and you could fossilize it a little bit, you could probably sell that baby. You ever seen a, you ever seen a unicorn fart, Jackie? No. It's just dazzles. Really, really fine uh, glitter. Yeah, Rain all rainbow color. <laughs> Sounds amazing. <laughs> that smells so bad, but it's pretty. <laughs> Tastes a <of> rainbow, Newt. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bite like my face. <laughs> jab at Newt Gingrich. Because he got dumped. You never saw that, Jackie? Mm-hmm. Uh, LGBT whatever activist dumped a rainbow confetti on his head uh-huh. when he was in a book signing and said, yeah. Taste the rainbow, Newt. <laughs> it was no, awesome. I didn't see that. That sounds pretty cool, though. Yep, unicorn farts. Magical. Okay, so uh, then he's also got like a murder tunnel because there's this just giant hole in his basement. I, that's like the body storage and other storage things. Yeah. He's got an open basement. It's weird. Yeah, I don't think it's that the aliens came through the hole in the wall because he's not like pertur- like he's not concerned about the fact that he's got a hole in the wall. He just looks in the hole. Like, is there anything <laughs> in the hole? Yeah. Like, how about how is this? How's this hole going to affect my life? I think today? the hole was there earlier. It's this all of the. Things that are happening, removable windows, unfinished partial basements that have got earth in them. It's New England. Some of these houses are really old. Yeah, that's true. But uh, anyways, so the kids, they get into some uh, Christmas shenanigans. They're wrestling around and the daughter's stuffing him in a freaking cardboard box. And then they (laughs) tussle. They tussle on some wrapping paper. I mean, it's just Christmas everywhere with these two. They yeah they they eventually will tucker themselves out from all the wrestling. I like when he uh when he gets out of the box he, the 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 child actor completely ate shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. And the girl looks at the camera like, "Are we going to keep that?" And he's oh. like, "Of course we're keeping <laughs> it. We're keeping everything." <laughs> yeah. So dad's at work, and he's having flashbacks to the the morning with the UFO, and he's like, "Oh." That had to be a UFO. This is 1998. I know. I'll look up UFOs on the internet, which if you go back tonight, if you go back in the Wayback Machine, and you start looking at the internet in 1998, that's all it was, was and do you, UF, UFO posts. What was the encyclopedia? I couldn't find it. Do you know how hard it was to find SVHS on the internet? It's so irrelevant now. Oh, I'm sure. Like I had to do SV, S-VHS. Uh-huh video to get the jvc result on wikipedia yeah if i just did svhs there was a thousand other acronyms Uh um what was the encyclopedia it wasn't in carta we had the competitor and it doesn't seem like the internet remembers it when we were in high school that uh the competitor cd rom in carta um it wasn't encyclopedia britannica because they didn't do cd rom yet it was like unless it was in carta and i don't remember it no i think there was one before in carta and we had that, and the internet doesn't remember what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's, man, that's uh, really going Also, back. another symptom of the time, the monitor is off to the side, mm-hmm. which is as it was, because they took up a whole section of desks. They right. just were so big, they didn't fit on things. Yes. Desks were never made. The monitor problem was never solved <laughs> until we got flat screens. <laughs> CRTs. Oh, man, can you imagine how many CRTs are in some fucking hole in the ground right now, just rotting and leaking out goop into They had to have everywhere. smashed all those up for glass. I don't know, Something, man. right? There had yeah. to be something worth it in those. God, to just Because so they many. we had to t- take them to a special place. If they were fucking gaslighting us and making us drive to a special spot and then just dumping them in the landfill, fuck you, dump people. Yeah, fuck you, dump people. I mean, I'm sure there's some good... Good. There's plenty dump. of good dumb people, yeah. but whoever is in, whoever called that shot's an asshole. Yeah. If that happened. All right. So the boss comes in. He's like, "God damn it! You're looking up damn UFOs. God damn it again, you son of a bitch! I freaking hate you. Why did I hire you or anybody else? Go to hell." What is what is it? Uh, <laughs> what do aliens have to do with insurance claims? <laughs> Nothing exactly. Shithead. <laughs> I hope you and your family die in a car crash. Now get back to work. You're not leaving early. <laughs> or getting paid. <laughs> I need this data entry done on Christmas Eve. Asshole. <laughs> Fuck Probably stick. because you type eight words a minute. This guy is unbelievable. I love him. Yeah, he's something else. <laughs> like, and, and dad just kind of is like, 
Well, another day at the office, you know what I mean? I mean, it's always, you know, you've got jobs, they suck. Everybody hates their job. It's like, no, you need to find a new job, dude. No, his job before this was at the fucking pallet factory <laughs> that we see later. And you're like, this is an upgrade. This is totally an upgrade. This guy's letting you hunt and peck. <laughs> oh, my God. So back at home, the kids have fallen asleep. The mom's upstairs wrapping presents. And uh, the aliens, they've just been chilling out in the basement this whole time, but they finally decide to head upstairs. The dog sees them. This is the dog, right? There's a dog in this movie, everybody. I don't know if we remember that part, and I don't know if the family does, but there's this wounded, injured dog. He sees them, and he's like, bark, bark, bark. And uh, the aliens, they're like, oh, shit. Dogs, they, run. Yeah, they run back downstairs, and then they start giggling. And the only thing we can figure out is the dog got in trouble for barking? And so yeah. the aliens are like, ha, 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 suck it, dog. <laughs> almost. Like, the dog almost got in trouble. She's like, you're being bad. And then, like, carries the dog off in a warm embrace. So he's not in very much trouble. <laughs> They're like, yeah. <laughs> Fucking weird-ass aliens. Back at the church, Pastor uh, Diamond... Sweater. Reverend Murder Attic Diamond yeah. Sweater. Gotcha. He's back to his scriptures. Uh, I guess he just looked in the hole and was like, well, that's what it normally looks like. I'm going back to these scriptures. Uh, reading that passage about, you know, I'm one of the violent ones, I'm assuming. You know, like Sodom and Gomorrah, where an entire town died because God was like, stop having sex with each other's butts. I think he skips those and he reads the really happy ones and then he finds people that he thinks don't like the happy ones mm. and he turns them into human suits in his attic. Okay, okay. Now I'm making. He happy also has acquired. It. He's also acquired a flashlight now. Okay. It's true. So he goes and checks out the mysterious hole again, and one runs up and I'm putting this in quotes too. Kills him because I don't know how. And that's our body count, guys. Venom? They're venomous? I mean, I guess an elf dies later, but he's not... that. He falls. Yeah, he falls to his death. Uh, how do they kill people? Venom? they too small to do anything. Like, I mean, I guess Venom, that checks out, but they also eat people. And these people are like, ah, blood sprayed everywhere. They're choking out blood out of their mouths while they're getting attacked by these things like they, they they can knock people over and their ankle height yeah i don't even need a shotgun i just need a good pair of boots yeah just punt them punt them <laughs> Bunk. out into the lake i mean these things are they're not taking over shit guy at the beginning of the movie no but there is a big one okay there is there's one that's kind of human sized there is yeah, and it's it looks different. It was the glowy one. It was, it's made to at least seem like it's bigger. Huh? I don't know if it is. Jackie, I thought they were all about the same size. Some of them were thin, and some of them were fat. I huh. didn't, I didn't see any. Like, of and one had red glowing eyes. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyways, so Dad drives home. Uh, oh, and this is great. Like he hits a, a pile of snow. And the alien that's been stuck outside this whole time is like, ah, <laughs> he takes the snow pile to the face. <laughs> snow, <laughs> snow can knock these things down. They are not conquering anything. <laughs> and if they get locked out, they just wander around right. aimlessly. I don't know where I am or what to do. So he goes inside. He talks to the kids. How's Christmas going? And they're like, great. Uh, he's like, where's your mom? And her uh, very uh, sistery vibe to me. Uh, she's upstairs. Okay. So, hey, honey. Uh, see you wrapping presents. Uh, did you see that UFO this morning? She's like, uh, you've been eating, drinking too much eggnog. Hee hee hee. It's very cheesy. The aliens, they have beamed into a pallet manufacturer because that's how they're taking down Earth. <laughs> that's what Step their one. plan is. Kill the pallet guy. <laughs> Pallets. Step two. <laughs> Wait for this town in Pennsylvania. <laughs> To run out of pallets, hey. at which point we will have a perfect opportunity to strike. <laughs> you got any more pallets? No, I'm out, man. I don't know what is where the pallet shortage. 
We haven't made a pellet in 10 years. We just keep reusing the damn things. Yeah. We just make more when we run out, and it's been like five years. <laughs> yeah, pallet. Like, why are they tagging the pallet manufacturer? And then, so they chase this guy around. He's inside. Oh, and he's also, he's all, he's stealing money. He's pocketing some of that sweet pallet cash. <laughs> cash and pallets. Uh, they chase him around. And they, they get him by the ankles. They knock him over. I guess this that wasn't the body count. But they knock him over. And he's like, ah. And they're pulling him. And he's like hanging onto the side. No. <laughs> Blood's everywhere. It's like, dude, just kick him. This would have been one of those that in normal pallet guy mm-hmm. would have been on the forklift moving pallets around. Mm-hmm. And they would have just been run over. And he's like, just- I ran over some weird hairless rats. You yeah. need to mop that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so dad has put the kids to bed and uh they leave santa and uh, some cookies and milk and dad's like uh, don't mind if i do and helps himself but he only kind of nibbles at the cookies right. like they're not very good uh-huh. like somebody made these and he was like "Ooh, it's a marshmallow chocolate ball thing gross <laughs> and then i also like the kids are like so does santa eat all the milk and cookies and dad's like yeah that's why he's so and then he walks over and he's like, okie dokie. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat these cookies. And at this point, I've really noticed that the aliens in their house versus the other aliens are really dawdlers. Yeah. Oh, man. They're getting nothing done. Yeah. I mean, they have the, they still have got nothing done in this house. Nothing. Dad- uh, my theory is, is that there's a freezer down in their basement okay. that has like popsicles and frozen mm. treats. And they're just yeah, yeah. down there fucking eating swans. Mmm. Swans. Swans ice cream. Yeah. And they're just like, yum, 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 yum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The chocolatey ones have got the nuts on the outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Luckies. Okay. So uh, I wonder if we have swans. We live in Illinois. You think that swans would be a. Like- I thought swans was a West Coast thing. Really? No, swans is. Swans is no, they got to be nationwide because they wouldn't have had a NASCAR. Schwann's had a NASCAR car for a long time, so they're not going to run that many races on that side of the country if they're not on that side of the country. There you go. There you go. All right. So uh, dad and mom, they go into the basement to get some more presents, and uh, the aliens are like, going to get you. And one just takes off running after dad and then knocks itself unconscious on an object that was right in front of its face. They don't have great motor control, and they uh-huh. have a real difficult time stopping, as we'll see later. And apparently vision problems, too, because it just ran right into that goddamn thing. And Dad's like, oh, hey, look at this. What's this little piece of shit? Uh, what a weird little doll that our kids have. Why? Where'd this come from? Honey, did you buy this? No. Did you? No. Then he tosses it on the ground, and it bounces a little bit. And that's why I'm like, it's made of rubber. At least I can tell that. Yeah, but Dana, my problem is well, it must be the kid's doll. Where did it come from? Why did they buy this little ugly Satan doll? Why did you get it? We should have a talk with our children. This is not a props. Maybe grandma buys some weird shit. And yeah. they're like, yeah, par for the course. Yeah, maybe I forgot about grandma. Okay. So uh, they sneak up the aliens and they do kill the dog. Here we go. They've killed the dog, which the dog just sits there and gets killed. It just is like, ah, I see it coming. And then its tail's wagging and then it stops wagging. Like it was I think wagging its tail while getting murdered. The dog is still under sedatives because it didn't have a broken leg in the first scene. And then it got hit by a car. Mm-hmm. And now it's got a bum limb and it's on uh, whatever you can, whatever uh, anesthesia, maybe. Sure. Okay. I'm giving this a hall pass that way. All right. All right. Or it's yeah. just a really bored dog (laughs) yeah go ahead and kill me i just uh please i'm tired of living with the munsons they're so boring (laughs) well guess what's outside santa (laughs) fucking actual santa is in this movie i did not see that coming (laughs) yeah and i don't i think this is toaster snow oh you think you don't think that was real it seems like it's toaster i think it was uh not real snow (laughs) And the aliens in the ship, they've spotted him on their their cameras, their scopes or whatever. And they're doing the giggle thing again. They're like, ah, because I guess they're stoked that they're going to 
kill Santa? Do they know about Santa? Like, why are they so jacked about, like, shouldn't they be like, Jesus Christ, this guy's got flying, they just got flying animals on this planet. Let's get the fuck out of here. What if he's got lasers? Which he does. So this is weird because later we're going to see him try to eat the Santa doll. So it's almost like the ones in the house are beaming around. Uh-huh. Because they will behave later like Santa was the most delicious thing they've had since they've gotten to Earth. Oh, okay. So maybe, okay. Santa's eating all these cookies. That's why he's so fat. So let's say that they want to get Santa, that they're willing to take a chance on getting that Santa because he's made of cookies. He's just got cookie in his tummy. He's fat with cookies and they love cookie fat. If they were a spacefaring race, Mm -hmm. then they would fool us into a Logan's Run sort of situation where we get everything we want, we eat too many cookies, and then we go to Happy Land, which is actually a slaughterhouse. And we're none the wiser, and we're probably killed harmlessly. Uh Uh-huh. But they don't do that because they're they're stupid. They're They're really stupid. But I think that the whole movie, we just cracked it. They, They need cookie fat. That's what they want. They want fat people because you're going to eat them and they've got like like their uh, desire, their instincts to the, the smell of fat. They just want it. And that's mm-hmm. why they want Santa. Because if I saw Santa flying around, I'm in a spaceship. I'd be like, you know what? No, I'm going to go back down and get these people that are on the ground. I'm not fucking with this guy that's got flying fucking reindeer. Clearly, he's got magic. Yeah. I'm out. Mm-mm. They're like, we let's get him. Uh, so Back to uh, the guy getting interrogated. He's back in the movie and he tells us feeders one, right? I'm guessing we didn't see feeders one. Do we care? Yeah. Cause it's yeah, we, this is a part where I actually <laughs> almost checked out when they started regurgitating large portions of feeders one. Yeah. It's a huge mistake in any movie. Don't cram in another movie into your existing movie. Uh, it's my least favorite this, part of this movie for sure. This is two out of the gate on this new magical. They actually can make the movies system that they have now. So you have to think also that they're giddy to just because they can make movies twice as fast as mm-hmm. they were making them before, and they weren't even able to finish their films up until the film before feeders. So they're like four in, and so they're just running willy nilly. Yeah, this is just symptomatic of what almost any one would do if they had gone through what these guys have gone through. I do want to make a couple points about his story about feeders one a him and his buddy are going to the lake to be like, let's chill out at the lake. They kill a guy and they're like, after they kill a guy, they're like, yeah, let's go chill out the lake. Yeah. Sorry. Well, hit a man with my car. Supposed to meet some ladies. Well, those ladies are dead. Bang them. But they didn't know they got eaten by aliens. No, they brought there's a the shot. dead guy. There's a shot of him hit. finding one of the dead girlfriends. And the, he's like, yeah, they didn't show up, but not alive at least. And then he's like, immediately after that, he's like, so we decided to, you know, camp out there for the night. We we're getting all ready. You're, you found your dead girlfriend's skinned over body and you're like, well, let's still go camping here. <laughs> that Probably bear ain't going to drink itself. Right? <laughs> um, there's also a point where this becomes ultra problematic in that they reveal that in the first feeders, they're able to shapeshift into human form and mimic. No, they clone him. They clone him? They made, he says that they made another. So his buddy gets beamed into the ship and they do some alien stuff, I'm assuming with his butt. And then they have a doppelganger. They they made a doppelganger of him. Right, Jax? Yep, that's what happened. So then the cloning machines on the Fritz... Why did they yeah. need it? Why, what do you mean? It's out of order. It's like the milkshake machine every time you want one from McDonald's. It's always out of order. Which seemed to be a good strategy to make another clone in this situation if it worked so good in the last oh, one. Oh, you mean in the present? Because no, yeah. there's no other doppelgangers throughout the whole goddamn thing. But why make doppelgangers to begin with? That doesn't or get you Santa you fat. Clone them, you just like... All right, we've got the genetic material. We need to make food. See you later. Right. Instead, they drop him back off. And the guy's like, hey, 
you're over there and you're over there. Which one's real? And he, instead of, I mean, it's not like the doppelganger comes in. He's like, ah, I got to get you or anything. The guy runs out. And he's like, ah, die, cop doppelganger. And he's like, why did you kill my doppelganger? That's a good point. Why did I do that? <laughs> why did I do that? Why did they make one? Why did they, Why did I just go into a raid? You say doppelganger. I'm like, die. I assume yeah. you're evil. A direct clo- copy it's of my just, best friend. <laughs> because German words just sound mean. Yeah, right. Sam, if anybody makes a doppelganger of you, I'm killing it. Nobody why, better why, fucking make a doppelganger Why would anyone do that? An exact copy of Sam. It, it needs to die. It's got to <laughs> die. <laughs> why did he kill it? I, I would have it by the house across the street so that, you know, we could be neighbors. I mean, you got now two of your best friend. It seems like that's a good thing, bud. Why don't you rush out there? Ah! <laughs> Fucking dumb shit. And then the guy is like, yeah, so I killed my best friend. Turns out the doppelganger was the one inside the house, so I murdered my best bud. Uh, goodbye. And he just leaves. It's that, like, so the whole thing is implying that he's, like, telling the FBI or somebody, oh, we got to stop these aliens. And then he's like, yeah, so I killed, I killed the guy. Uh, good, good day to you. <laughs> they're like, yes, just leave through that door. And he goes in and it's a jail cell. And he's like, hey, wait. And they're like, yeah, you're in jail now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Back at the Munsons, the basement aliens, they've come up again. The family's asleep. And these fucking aliens see Santa and these decorations and they start eating them. But they haven't left the house. They're no. not the aliens that attacked Santa. This doesn't make any sense. No, but like, why are they eating? They're eating bulbs. They're eating the Christmas light, the the wires that are for the Christmas tree. They've forgotten what they're supposed to eat because they're so stupid. They're so stupid. They are the dumbest. Meanwhile, Santa, he's okay, but he's grounded. Uh, no more... No more, you know, no more slay, I guess that's what you call it, because uh, they attacked him and killed his elf buddy. And the, I think the slay crashes. Not real clear on that. At one point, the Santa has a seems to have a Canadian accent. Oh, God. Wait till we get to Santa's dialogue. Oh, I don't think it's Canadian, Sam. I think it's uh, a little further south. But because uh, I thought I would nominated him for this year's Canooster Award. <laughs> It's like a Canuck and Oscar mixed. (laughs) Okay. So the kids get up. They see Santa collapse out on uh, their playground equipment. They're like, Santa, uh, somebody's got to help him. Let's go wake up our parents. So they go and they get the the dad and they're like, Santa's out on the driveway. And dad's like, "Uh." but they hear a growl outside because the aliens are now sneaking around their house. Dad's like, uh, or it's the one that's been outside and can't figure out yeah, what right? to do. I don't know who growls. And they, like nobody's heard them growl. They've been growling this whole goddamn time. Why is it now you hear them? Whatever. Dad's like, you stay here, your family. I'll, I'll go check it out. So he goes downstairs. Aliens jump on him, but he immediately just does what everybody else should have done. He chucks it out the goddamn door and shuts the door because they can't open doors. Yes, they They're can not because tall yes, they can because we see this with the first kill with the old lady and the cat because he opens the screen door and then he opens up the other door and and you it's just true. see the top of the door and he goes in. Yeah, that's I true. Guess <clears throat> they lock the bedroom door. I don't think so. Okay, I think they're just too stupid. They I mean they have the power to beam wherever they want to go. That's also true. They could just beam into there. So he Dad sees a UFO outside. He's like shit. Uh, the aliens have been foiled by this door. I mean, seriously. And, uh, dad's like, oh, there's a guy out there. I should go check on him. Not realizing it's Santa. So he goes downstairs. The aliens have been so foiled by the door. They're like, ah, let's go someplace else. And so he goes, it's clear. He goes downstairs, grabs a kitchen knife and slowly turns around. And the alien just runs right onto the end of the fucking kitchen knife just kebabs itself as hard as it can (laughs) and he's like huh Huh. (laughs) and then it dies and he goes i'm gonna go get that guy i definitely don't need this knife 
anymore, which yeah. is a magnet to alien suicide. <laughs> So he brings Santa inside. More aliens are beaming down. Uh, and Santa's like, he tells him he's, uh, hey, you're naughty for not believing in me. Wait, you're real, Santa? And Santa's like, you know what? I ain't scared of these little fuckers. <laughs> this was a great also, he speech. He, what did you say? He gets the canoosker. Jackie. The canoosker. Uh, Jackie, he, I think she hit it on the nose. It, I mean, it was a great speech. It was like, I've dealt with crying children, greedy kids, bad parents, uh, dogs, cats, mailmen. Like, I'm ready for anything. But what was his voice? Oh, my God. So he sounded like Barney from The Simpsons, like the drunk Barney. Like, oh, guys, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fall over in any minute. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Santa? He does not sound like Santa. He doesn't He's sound been like drinking oh, oh, yeah. a lot of Duff beer. When he says believe later, he he pronounces it believe. Believe. <laughs> you just have to believe. <laughs> so he, the other thing is, is that he touches his nose and teleports. He doesn't just touch it. I mean, it's there for a long time. It's there he, for a good minute where I he's like it. rubbing on it. Like, uh, but come on, has, guys. He has the power that we were confused about last week from Violent Night. That's but a Santa thing. Doesn't quite. He misses his nose at first. He like puts his hand on his face and then kind of has to move his finger down where he's actually touching his nose. So he might be really drunk. I, I'm just saying that there's some piece of Santa lore out there that we don't know about. That that is a Santa power. Like, Santa think, touches his nose and teleports. Didn't that happen in the Tim Allen ones, too? I don't fucking know. I'm not a yeah, Santa I didn't really pay attention to those. It okay, did. then it's, yeah, there's there's Santa lore out there that we didn't, I, I'm learning about as of today, that that's a but real I, thing. I think the real lore that we're not focusing on, though, is that Santa is always just drunk as fuck at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill some aliens. So, Got a Gotta go. One day now. of the year he's Santa, every other day of the year he's Bojangles. Yeah. <laughs> so the aliens have come in. They're surrounding Dad uh, Munson. And then Santa, he shows back up just in time to fucking laser them. He's got a goddamn laser gun. Yep. It was going to be next year's hot toy for kids so that, you know, they could kill birds and squirrels and other people's pets. Uh, but, you know, he decided that this was a special occasion and he would bust it out to kill aliens. Now, let's go kick butt. <laughs> and he chases all of them off. Starts fucking blasting aliens outside. They run and escape the remaining ah, retreat. And he's like, uh, you think that's it, huh? And he Santa teleports a fucking present into their spaceship that does some... It gets into the crazy nuke effect. It it does some video toaster. <laughs> yeah, it's a bomb. It's the same ending as Independence Day. <laughs> I think it's a bomb because the ship doesn't blow up. It like tilts sideways. Oh, no, we're sideways. And then it just disappears after sparkle effects. Yeah. It's pretty bad. And uh, yeah, OK. Yeah, I've, I've got the buy leave note here. Because he's like, uh, Dad's like, is it too late to save Christmas? And Santa's like, of course not. All you have to do is buy leaf. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Santa. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> so then Alan wakes up. Was it all a dream? Was that real? Was it too surreal to be a dream is a line in this movie. And I was like, oh, fucking God damn it. <laughs> that sucks. Mm-hmm. Was it all just a dream? No, honey, there's still a dead elf in our yard. Yeah, I mean... What happens to the elf? What happens Does to the he... dead elf? Yeah. What happens to everything? Because all is well. Uh, he's questioning things. The, they have Christmas. The kids are opening up their presents. It's Xmas Day. And uh, the last present is Dad's. And she's like, open it up. Go ahead. And, ah, it's an alien! Ah, freeze frame credits. 
How did she do that? Did she do that? Because here's the thing. it That packet, that present, is in the exact same wrapping paper and the exact same size as the bomb Santa sent into the freaking aliens. Did Santa give that to him? <sighs> or did she give it to him and the alien was like, oh, was yeah. Was the alien just hiding in there the whole time? Oh, I'll do that for, because uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh, Jack, what's... You guys, you guys see Under Siege? This is going to be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm like, with you Sam, that's Erica what happened. You do tits, it's going to be way lamer. <laughs> Ba 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 ba. I also want to mention that nobody checks on the dog that they've left down in the basement. The okay, the dog, the dog is dead, right? Yeah. Did they eat the whole dog? Does anybody? They they have Christmas. Like, hey. Also, they your did, mom is dead. Let the dog just get hit and not notice. I don't know. These might not be good dog people. They might not be good people because mom is as evidenced in this by its own dialogue. She calls people all the goddamn time. Very first thing. You better believe mom would be on that cordless phone with the long antenna calling them and being like, and also wait, you live in the same town. Why aren't you over here for Christmas morning, mom? Oh, because she's dead and they didn't even fucking think about her. <laughs> yeah. They were probably just like grateful that she hadn't shown up yet. They're like, well, For maybe once. she boozed it up last night and she's not going to make it. It's weird that she hasn't called, though. I don't don't worry about that. Like. No consequences in this movie. Their dog is they don't even know if their dog is dead. They never found the dog. They don't even no. care. And they don't care about their mother in law or her mom or whoever. Jesus. All right, questions? Anybody else? Jackie? I think I just asked all of them. I did but too. I do have one thing I want to mention that okay. was really funny that I missed when it was happening. When he leaves to go outside the bedroom and she's like, hold me, kids. The boy straight up grabs her boob. Nice. Nice work. Nice work. Like Al Pacino dude. doesn't even get yeah. that handsy. Yeah, nice work, kiddo. <laughs> it's okay because you're five. That's when you can you can get away with that. If I could only go back to being five years old, Ooh. <laughs> be a lot of felt up ladies. <laughs> Good luck. That is so weird. <laughs> I don't think it would work. He'd... No, this is my this is my favorite. What would you do? Like if your kid was a butt grabber, mm -hmm. like how you got to deal with that now? Hey, Jackie, you were a butt grabber. <laughs> I was still I got... a butt grabber. Uh, yeah, I got in trouble in uh, first grade. For grabbing my teacher's butt. <laughs> and that's, uh, amb that's ambitious. <laughs> I was told not to do that again, or I was going to get grounded and I was going to get a spanking with the belt. So I never did it again. Did you, now, were you, did you grab the butt because it was big and it was like, it, it's just saying, grab me, or were you doing a good game? It was a good game because she gave okay. me back this test. She's like, good job. And I'm like, thanks, whap. <laughs> You know, it was a sports thing. I How? Was thinking, I just thought that that's what you did. <laughs> and so it was like, all right, I got an A. Good game. And I slapped her on the ass and I got fucking in trouble. <laughs> uh, I think you did the right thing. <laughs> it was, yeah, you betcha. <laughs> That's right. I am good. I am a good gamer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Final question. Uh, did this capture the true Chris spirit of Christmas? Jackie. No. 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 Okay. no. This. No. This was Sam? about aliens. No, it doesn't mention anything about Christmas other than Santa's drunk. Yeah. No, I don't think it does. I don't think that there's any moral to be grabbed here. I guess maybe the best I could do is believe in Santa and he'll believe believe in by leave in Santa and he'll blow away aliens if they attack. But other than that, like, no. Um, and Santa and also, definitely was not as cool as Violent Night Santa. Also, Santa didn't do shit. 
because see, yeah, they all the presents that the kids open up are the presents that they the the parents themselves wrapped up. And it's weird also because of the Santa thing. At one point, she looks over at him and says, so about this Santa stuff, do you think he's real? And he's like, bitch, we just bought all the goddamn, of course he's not real, you stupid idiot. But he's like, well, I haven't believed in Santa since I was a little kid. (laughs) I don't know, though. I'm a little on the fence. I After the UFO search on the internet, I did, is Santa real? And, uh. It seems inconclusive. <laughs> inconclusive. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, but no, no, this does not capture the true spirit of Christmas. Final recommendations. Let's start with Sam. <sighs> um, Most people cannot watch hobby films. Okay. It's just a thing. Um, if you can watch hobby films, this one's fine. Okay. But that's... It's very tough to watch at points. The flashback sequence I checked out. Yeah. Because we, it's, it's like hard to say, don't watch this and praise the man completely for what he does Mm -hmm. at the same time though. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's my caveat is that if you can make it through no budget or hollow, um, you know, no budget or, uh, complete hobby home films, then give her a whirl. But, the average viewer will become completely fatigued in minute 10. Okay. Jackie. I'm giving it a do it if you're sick and you're going to fall asleep. Okay. The sick do again from you. Uh, I'm also going to give it a do uh, with a lesser caveat than Sam. I think for the most part, um, as far as Sinker Madness listeners, uh, this is a do for all of you. So then that's who's listening. Yes. Obviously the casual viewer is not going to uh, go for this. Um, I actually had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it's highly riffable. Um, the, the flashback sequence is the only unfun part. And also it's only 82 minutes. It is quick shit. So, um, it didn't <clears throat> seem like it was only 82 minutes to me. Okay. All right. I had more fun than I think he, either of you guys did. Uh, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I laughed my ass off. Okay. So um, it's a it's a two thumbs up for me. I liked it. I will be uh, putting it on my, well, not favorite Christmas movie because it's not really a Christmas movie. It's a movie that takes place at Christmas, but I liked it. So there you go. Uh, Sam, the pick for you is next week. Your Christmas pick. Uh, what, you, what you got? I haven't done it yet. This is the one I struggle with the most, finding a goddamn Christmas movie to do. Okay. All right. Well, good luck. Uh, I'm not sharing any of mine. <laughs> yeah, because they're so hard to fucking find. This is the the most difficult theme to find movies for that we do. Yeah. Okay, well, I uh, hope everybody has a great week and get to the chopper.